Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Monday, September 10th at about 7 p.m. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. I've never loved that saying because the statistics don't lie. It's the people who use them who do. President Trump started the day with a statistical tweet storm. And as is so often the case with him, he couldn't leave good enough alone and had to embellish, leading even Fox News to call him out on his mistaken claims. But he wasn't the only one misusing numbers. He's the president, so we'll start with him. He accurately claimed the 4.2% GDP growth in the second quarter of this year was higher than the 3.9% unemployment rate. That hasn't happened much in recent years. But Trump couldn't just claim that substantial achievement. He said it was the first time it had happened in a century. Sorry, Mr. President. While it last happened in 2006, it happened on average about once a year in the second half of the 20th century. Trump then claimed GDP would be down dramatically if Democrats were in control, ignoring the fact that the economy was already growing under President Obama. He also falsely claimed GDP was about 1% in 2016, Obama's last year, and going down. It actually was 1.6% and arguably going up. That's where his critics use where his critics use statistics to create their own dubious reality. Many pointed out that GDP went up in the third quarter of 2016 under Obama by 3.5%, often conveniently ignoring that growth was barely over 1% for the first two quarters of Obama's last year, and that it declined significantly in the quarter before Trump took power. Trump should have just said, the unemployment rate is at an 18-year low. GDP growth is much better than anything under Obama, and it's higher than unemployment, something that hasn't happened in 12 years. I suspect any president of the U.S. would have been thrilled to claim that. Not Trump. He had to exaggerate, and his misstatements became the story. An unforced error. Another unforced error? The anonymous op-ed last week in the New York Times wasn't good for Trump, nor was Bob Woodward's new book. So why in the world does Trump keep tweeting about both and baiting Woodward? That gives the media the fuel it needs to keep the fire going. And Woodward fired back, saying Trump is detached from reality and jeopardizes national security. I hope people in the Carolinas and Virginia are taking the threat of Hurricane Florence seriously because it is likely to make landfall as a major hurricane and it will be moving slowly, increasing the damage from the winds and dumping enormous amounts of rain that could lead to serious flooding. As if that weren't enough, its track means that it could bring a huge storm surge with it, a major problem for coastal areas. Amid all this, Syria is heating up with Russia threatening to attack U.S. troops that support Syrian rebels. The U.S. also says Syria is planning a chemical weapons attack on Idlib, a rebel stronghold, and the Pentagon has reportedly drawn up plans to strike Syrian government forces. Oh, by the way, the Trump administration announced it is closing the Palestine Liberation Organization's mission in Washington, blaming Palestinian resistance to peace talks. It's just the latest blow dealt to the Palestinians by the U.S. following the ending of a variety of funding that helped Palestinians and the move of the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Palestinians called the closing of the PLO office a bullying tactic and vicious blackmail. In our daily alternate universe segment, The Great Divide Between Conservative and Liberal Media, there was a time when a confrontation between the U.S. and the PLO would have been the lead story on every newscast. This morning, some TV news shows didn't even mention it, and both left and right gave it little attention, proving again that television is increasingly not the place you want to go if you want to get fully informed. You can find these stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. And please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.